Hello everybody from SLG Hello Doctor. Starting today, we will be bringing to you interviews with some of the finest doctors, surgeons and consultants on a wide range of topics from physical to mental to emotional health and well-being. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel SLG Hello Doctor to catch our fortnightly capsules of knowledge sharing. Don't hesitate to fill our chat box with any questions or queries you have for our panel of experts and get the best advice from them. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Vijay Verma, Consultant Nephrologist at SLG Hospitals. Namaste yes. and welcome to you, sir. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Dr. Verma will talk to us about the whys and what's of nephrology, the disease related to kidney. So let's start, Dr. Yes, sir. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vijay Verma, working as a consultant nephrologist at SLG Hospitals. We are here today to discuss about kidney and its diseases. So nephrology per se is a science dealing with kidney and what are all the problems that are associated with it. As you are aware, with the advent of non-communicable diseases on the rise, like diabetes and hypertension, the kidney diseases are on the rise in our country. So, how is it that anyone would know that there is a specific problem pertaining to kidney? There are various manifestations that can happen when someone has a kidney problem. But mind you, more than 80% of the patients do not actually have symptoms when they have until their kidney problems uh, reach to a certain extent. So it's very important that we get our kidneys checked on a regular basis and are well versed with what are the manifestations of the kidney problem so that we can identify and get treated at an early stage. Thank you doctor for that very very quick overview. I think we've just got um, a fair understanding of what we'll be dealing with today. So I'm going back to the basics and I'm going to ask you a question. What are the functions of a kidney? So many people think that the function of the kidney is to make urine, but that isn't the sole function. Kidney is involved in various important, uh, I can say it's a catalyst. You can, it, it can work as a mediator between various hormones. So one of the major things that kidney does is formation of urine through which various toxins that are produced on a day to day basis are excreted in the urine. Apart from that, it is a very important organ in the fluid balance. So how much fluid has to be retained inside the body and how much fluid needs to be excreted depends on the good function of a kidney. Say someone, uh, someone moves around in a very hot, humid, sunny day. So obviously their water losses will be so much. So kidney senses that, okay, my body is uh, not gaining enough water. So I have to retain water. So it can sense the amount of water that is being given to it, how much it needs to excrete. Apart from that, the kidney also does a good function of acid-base balance. So many times you see people complaining of burning maturation. They say that the urine is very, uh, uh, it's difficult in passing the urine and all that. A lot of these symptoms are because of the kind of food that they take. Say so people take a lot of acidic food. When I say acidic food, the amount of protein in a food decides how much acid is excreted in the urine and that will invariably decide whether a urine that is formed is an acidic urine or an alkaline urine. So people who are on vegetarian diet, their urines are tend, they tend to be more alkaline. Whereas people who eat more non-vegetarian and high proteinaceous food, their urines tend to be acidic. So someone takes a high acid uh, load induced food, acid load uh, rich food, such patients, the urine tries to alkalize the urine so that the balance is maintained. It's just like a buffer system. As in chemistry, we see the buffering of acid and base, the kidney does the exact uh, function in our body. Kidney is also an important organ which synthesizes the active form of vitamin D. So people think that vitamin D is uh, available to us from the sun, from the skin it gets activated. But one very critical step in vitamin D synthesis and the active form of vitamin D is produced from the kidney because it produces a hormone called as 1-alpha hydroxylase which activates the vitamin D that you take orally or that the one that you get naturally. So people who have kidney disease definitely tend to have 
uh, bone deciduous for the main reason being it is one of the organs that maintains the calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D. This balance is maintained by the kidneys. So people tend to have uh, bone problems when they have severe kidney failure. The other important function that kidney does is it is one of the organs from which an important hormone called as erythropoietin is produced which is required for the formation of blood. So invariably people who have severe kidney failure they tend to have severe anemia. That means a very low hemoglobin. Thank you doctor for elaborating on the functions of the kidney. The question is what causes kidney failure? There are many causes of kidney failure. In India, the studies suggest that the most common cause of kidney failure is secondary to diabetes. So people who have uncontrolled diabetes for years together, they tend to develop kidney failure. The other important causes include uncontrolled hypertension, that means very high blood pressure and people who tend to use a lot of painkillers and over-the-counter pills invariably over a prolonged period of time, time they develop kidney failure. There are few diseases which run in the families. So a genetic diseases like autosomal polysomal, autosomal polycystic kidney disease, few autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, these are certain diseases which tend to cause kidney failure. Patients who have kidney stones, these patients they tend to have kidney failure if they neglect the stone disease and some people tend to have recurrent urinary tract infections. So these are the broad causes that can cause kidney failure. The other causes, there could be various other reasons why a patient can develop kidney disease. Few people, they tend to have what is called as autoimmune disease. That means our body goes against our own organs and they try to damage the kidneys. And there are no specific reasons why such things should happen. These people tend to have a genetic predisposition and then when an insult like an infection happens, the innate immunity attacks our own kidneys and they tend to cause kidney disease. Let's take a short break now. Presenting SLG Hospitals, the next level medical destination. Envisioned by Sri Dandu Shivarama Raju and family. Powered by cutting edge technology and compassionate care, this 999 bed tertiary care facility adopts the latest medical practices followed worldwide. Built as per JCI guidelines and NABH quality standards, SLG Hospitals offers a wide range of solutions for all simple to complex conditions in all specialties of medicine. SLG has been able to attract the best of medical talent due to its vision, sheer scale and scope. With matchless experience and expertise, they are SLG Hospital's biggest strength. The team is ably supported by advanced technologies, infrastructure and protocols to deliver finest outcomes for patients. SLG Hospitals, the next level of care. So doctor, tell us what symptoms to look out for, which could indicate a potential kidney problem. This is a very important and interesting question, madam. Recently, almost 90% of the patients, they don't have symptoms until a majority of the kidneys are damaged. So, what we actually see is only the tip of the iceberg because many people tend to have underlying kidney disease absolutely without any symptoms. So once a patient develops significant kidney failure, that is when they start developing swelling of the feet, swelling around the eyelids, particularly more prominent during the early mornings. They tend to develop frothy urine because they tend to pass protein in the urine. Few people will have very high blood pressure following which they can have episodes of high headache and then uh, they take, sometimes they might pass urine more often where, uh, with an increased frequency of urination predominantly during the night time particularly if they are male patients who tend to have uh, prostate related issues and that thereby causing kidney disease apart from that the other symptoms could be vague symptoms someone could be absolutely weak and you would be attributing it to some other reason they tend to have low hemoglobin because of which they can become uh, breathless while they are walking. 
even a short distance which they were used which they used to walk previously now tends to make them more breathless so these are the few symptoms that can present but the take home point is don't wait until the symptoms appear it is important that we get our annual blood tests done and identify the kidney problem at an early stage doctor so what are the few tests that can be done to diagnose a kidney problem it is very easy to diagnose a kidney problem because the simplicity of the tests that can be done to diagnose a kidney problem are available right from our rural setup till the topmost corporate hospital in any city so the three basic tests that can be done to detect kidney problems are one a complete urine examination two a blood test called as serum creatinine and the three third one is the ultrasound abdomen where we can see what is the size of the kidney how the kidney looks is there a problem with the bladder and draining pipes for as ureters so these basic tests would cost a mere amount of 3000 rupees in a corporate setup or in a government setup it is absolutely free these tests are also available in our primary healthcare centers and they can also be availed of at the at our corporate setups also so people need to understand that these three tests can identify whether a person is suffering with a kidney ailment or not so if a person develops a kidney problem at some point in their life do they have to live with it through their life does it stay basically we have two types of kidney problems if we can broadly classify them into two groups one is the acute kidney injury and the other is the chronic kidney disease when we talk about acute kidney injury we have an insult which damages the kidney and when we address the insult the kidney tends to recover by itself sometimes most of the times it recovers uh, completely a few times the problem tends to persist and then that can lead to a chronic problem what we call as a chronic kidney disease now what are the causes of this acute kidney injury say someone takes painkillers for a short duration someone has a urinary tract infection or someone has an autoimmune problem which causes the acute kidney injury we address the primary cause and that causes the resolution of the kidney problem in such patients the kidney problem tends to resolve totally and all that we need to do is to regularly get checkups done so that the disease doesn't recur whereas in a chronic kidney disease whichever be the cause uh, as i have already discussed diabetes is the most common cause of chronic kidney disease or chronic kidney failure in our country so someone who has had diabetes for a long duration hypertension for a long duration or a renal stone disease for a prolonged duration which was not addressed these are the patients who tend to develop slow progressive kidney problem and they reach the end stage kidney disease that is when the disease is not reversible and these are the group of patients who tend to require some kind of a renal replacement therapy so doctor in case there is a kidney failure what are the treatment options that patients have to answer your question there is a set of patients who tend to require prolonged duration of treatments in the form of a hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis or a kidney transplantation which i will be discussing If someone has a chronic kidney disease and they have reached the end stage such patients can be offered three modalities the first modality is hemodialysis wherein we ask the patient to come to the hospital weekly twice or thrice and through a fistula we tend to remove the blood from the body send it into a machine wherein the machine filters the blood removes the toxins that develop due to the kidney failure and then return the purified blood into the body this procedure is done for about 4 hours a day uh, in a week approximately thrice a week and this needs to be continued until he undergoes a kidney transplantation the second option is the peritoneal dialysis which can be done at home wherein a tube hollow tube is placed in the abdomen through surgical means and the patient or the attendant is trained to do a peritoneal dialysis wherein it is a procedure you fill in fluid into the abdomen and drain it out that needs to be done twice or thrice in a day and it can be done at home itself so these kind of patients they tend to visit the hospital once in a month to make their changes in their prescription the third and the best possible option that anyone can have is a kidney transplantation wherein a live donor someone in the family who is blood group matched person preferably if they come forward to donate the kidney 
in such patients we can do a kidney transplantation so studies have shown that based on the quality of life and the longevity of life kidney transplantation is the best option compared to dialytic modalities lastly doctor i would like you to give us some healthy lifestyle tips to maintain good kidneys the purpose of this talk is to enlighten people to save their kidneys so i would suggest that everyone exercises at least half an hour a day for at least 5 days in a week this would keep their blood pressure on the lower side and maintain a state of healthy well being the second thing is restrict your salt intake to as minimal as possible the who guidelines suggest that we take only 5 grams per day but an average indian takes close to 10 to 12 grams per day so if someone is taking pickles and junk food or biryani or any other food which has high salt automatically the amount of salt goes sky high and these are the patients who are prone for hypertension so please keep your salt to the minimum possible as low as 5 grams to keep your kidneys healthy the third thing is avoid any kind of over the counter pills because any medications which is not under the they are not taken under the supervision of a doctor can lead to kidney problems and also other uh, organ damage particularly the liver the fourth thing is someone who has kidney stones they tend to form stones recurrently such patients need to make sure that they take at least 3 to 4 liters of water per day the fifth one and the most important thing is avoid smoking and excessive alcohol intake these are definitely going to increase your kidney problems and patients who have diabetes and hypertension periodic checkups and good control of both these diseases make go a long way in controlling your disease uh, processes the last one is be happy and make sure that your stress hormones are not on the rise which invariably lead to various other organ damages apart from the kidneys have a healthy life have safe kidneys Thank you doctor I'm sure our viewers will now be in a better position to make all the right choices Viewers SNG hello doctor we'll be back in 2 weeks with well known orthopedician Dr. Dee Jagan Mohan Reddy, who will talk to us about partial knee replacement. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. Namaste.